Hey traders, welcome back to another PineScript lesson. This one is going to cover how to detect hammer and shooting star candles. Now this lesson is straight from the PineScript mastery course and I've adapted it for YouTube. And this is just a bit of a sneak peek into what you can expect if you ever sign up to the mastery course. But let's get on with the lesson. Now I'm re-recording this lesson uh, well after releasing the mastery course program because I found a much better way to detect these candlestick patterns. So what you see here is the old code. This was the code from when I originally released the course. And we are going to delete all of this and start again. And I will show you how to detect these candlestick patterns with much, much better accuracy and with more simplicity too, actually, for that matter. So the way this method works is instead of just comparing the wick size to the body size, like the old code did, we're actually using a Fibonacci calculation. So let me get rid of some of these lines here. We're going to use the Fibonacci mathematics in order to determine whether or not a given candle closes within a certain range. So right now I've set my Fibonacci tool to display, whoops, to display the 33.3% Fibonacci level. And what I'm looking for is a candle whose body closes in this upper third range of the Fibonacci. And of course, you can adjust this level to whatever you want uh, in the settings menu when we're done with this script. So for bullish hammer candles, we're looking for the candle to close in the upper third range of the candle size. So this candle here would actually no longer be considered a hammer candle according to these rules. But of course, we can adjust this later. But anyway, for uh, bearish candles, we're doing exactly the same thing, but to the downside. So we're calculating the Fibonacci range to the downside. And if the bar closes within that third of the candle size, then it will be considered a valid shooting star candle. So let's open up the Pine editor and get coding. The first thing I need to do is get user input, not in pit, input. And we need two inputs here. We're going to get the fib level that we want to use. And so this input is just going to be of data type uh, float. And its default value is going to be 0.333 or 33.3%. The next input we're getting is our color filter. So this will be a Boolean input. This will allow the user to select whether or not they want the shooting star to be red in order to be considered valid. So this candle that's printing right on my chart right now, this would be considered a valid shooting star candle uh, using our new Fibonacci rule. But some users prefer their shooting stars to be a red color. So this filter that we're writing in here will be used for that. So by default, I'm gonna leave this turned off. So it'll be false in the settings menu and the user will have to come up to the settings menu and turn this on if they only want to detect shooting stars that are red and hammers that are green. So the next thing we need to do is calculate our Fibonacci level for the current candle. And to do that, the math is actually quite simple. We need to calculate two different fibs though. We need a bullish Fibonacci and a bearish Fibonacci because the math is not the same uh, depending on which direction you're using this tool. So for a bull fib, we need to minus the low from the high and then multiply that by our fib level and then add the high back onto that result. So this here will give us the 33.3% Fibonacci retracement of any bullish candles. For the bearish version, we need to do the same, but we need to flip our price sources around. So we need to get the high minus the low multiplied by our fib level and then we need to add the low onto that value. And that will give us the 33.3% uh, price for bearish candles. So that's it for calculating our Fibonacci levels. You don't need to understand this math in order to use it. So I'll move on to the next part of the script, which is to determine which price source closes or opens higher or lower. So this will make sense in a second. So, so for this, we're gonna get two variables here. We're going to declare two new variables. One is called lowest body and one is called highest body. And so this is for determining the body of the candle. So for a bearish candle, the open will be higher than the close. And so the highest body will be the open. But on a bullish candle, the highest 
uh, price source of the body will be the close. And these values are used uh, to determine whether or not the current bar closed above or below our uh, Fibonacci level. So for our lowest body, we need to check, did the closing price close lower than the open? If so, then we want to reference the closing price. Otherwise, we want to reference the open price. Same for the highest body. Did the current candle's closing price close higher than it opened? If so, then we want to reference that closing price. Otherwise, we want to reference the opening price. Now we have all the information we need in order to determine whether or not the current bar meets our criteria for a hammer or shooting star candle. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to say determine if we have a valid hammer or shooting star. So for a hammer candle, we're going to check is the lowest body. So for a bullish candle, we're checking is the lowest body greater than or equal to our bull Fibonacci. If so, then we have a valid hammer candle. Same for our shooting star candles. We need to check is the highest body less than or equal to our bear Fibonacci. These two Boolean variables here will uh, flag any candles that meet our criteria for a bullish or bearish hammer or shooting star candle. So the next thing we need to do, or the final thing we need to do is plot the signals to the chart. So we're gonna use the plot shape function. We're gonna check, do we have a hammer candle? If we do, then we want to plot a shape dot arrow up and we want to give it a location of location dot below bar. And we want to give it a color of color dot green. And then we need to do exactly the same thing for our bearish candle. So I can just copy that line of code, change this to star candle, change this to arrow down, change location to above bar and the color to red. And finally, just because it's easy to do, we will trigger alerts if the user has set an alert on this script. So for that, we need to use the alert condition function. And we need to check, do we have a hammer candle or a star candle? Then we can title this alert, hammer or shooting star alert. And we can give it a message of, we'll just put the ticker in here, the price ticker. And of course this ticker placeholder will be replaced by whatever ticker of the market that you set the alert on. And that's it. If we save the script, we'll now be detecting hammer and shooting star candles that meet our Fibonacci criteria, as you can see there. The final thing we need to do is add in our color filter. So for this, I'm going to say and open bracket has the user disabled color filter, then this will return true. And if our lowest body exceeds our bull fib, then our hammer candle will be detected. Otherwise, if the user has actually turned color filter on, then we want to check, does the current closing price close higher than the current opening price? Or in other words, do we have a green candle? And now I can copy this to our star candle, flip this operator around, and now we have our color filter integrated. So you can see here, we have a red hammer candle that has a body that closes in the upper third of our Fibonacci range on this candle. If I come up to the settings menu and turn on our color filter, that setup will go away. Now we're only detecting green hammers and red shooting stars. And then finally, you can adjust your Fib level here. So if you wanted to be a little more lenient with your Fib level, you could set it to maybe a 382. And now you can see we are now detecting this hammer candle again. And if you wanted to detect this, a shooting star candle here, then you'd need to set it to about a 40% Fibonacci. So if we set that to four, it still doesn't pick it up, maybe a 0.5, 50% Fib. There we go. So now it's detecting these much larger bodied hammer candles. So that's pretty much it for this script. It's a pretty simple script but a very effective and simple way to detect these candlestick patterns in your indicators and strategy scripts. So that's it for this lesson. The source code will be available beneath the video as always. So you can go and play around with this if you want to. I hope you found this lesson interesting. I'll see you in the next one. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found that helpful. If you did and you want to learn more about PineScript, head over to pinescriptmastery.com. 
Here you'll find my advanced PineScript courses and my basics course, which is free. So if you want to learn more about PineScript, head over here and you'll find out a little bit more about me and a little bit more about PineScript. I hope you found this lesson interesting and helpful. I'll see you in the next one.